In this section, we will try to analyze the jam question paper and develop a strategy to tackle the questions in the examination. And today, we are going to discuss on stratigraphy and paleontology part. These are the topics from which we are getting continuous requests to make a video on. Now, talking about paleontology and stratigraphy. First of all, the syllabus is very vast. And second, there is not much concept involved in it. And for these obvious reasons, students search for shortcuts. So here we are with the important topics, the topics which really matters and they are very important from the exam point of view. So as always, let's analyze the question paper and then try to build up a strategy. Now let's start with the number of questions asked in previous years. And this graph shows exactly the same. From this graph, we can clearly see that on an average 8 to 10 questions are asked from stratigraphy and paleontology part every year. Now there is an important thing to mark here. In 2016, only 5 questions have been asked from both stratigraphy and paleontology part. And the very next year, that is in 2017, the examiner bombarded a lot of questions from this part. Now why I am discussing this fact is because in 2020 question paper, from both stratigraphy and paleontology part, we have got only 5 questions. So you may expect a good number of questions from this part in 2021. So now that we are expecting a good number of questions from paleontology and stratigraphy in 2021, so we must find out from which section we are going to get a maximum number of questions. So if you look in the graph here, so you can clearly see that there is no place for NAT in this chat. Because generally you don't expect NAT questions from paleontology and stratigraphy in JAM. So, we are left with only MSQ and MCQ questions. Now, let's look at the red bars here. These tall and red bars indicate the number of questions from 11 to 30 from paleontology in JAM. So, you can clearly see that you are getting a good number of questions from question number 11 to 30 from stratigraphy and paleontology. And you can also see that it is very important for MCQ part as well. So, whenever you study stratigraphy and paleontology, so, on the back of the mind, you must think that you are not generally going to get any NAT questions from this section. So, you need not to worry about that and you should focus on MCQ and MSQ from this section. Now, I think we have analyzed the question paper pretty well and now we should start developing a strategy so that we can score maximum marks in this part. First, let's discuss what are the points that you have to keep in mind when you are preparing for paleontology for IIT JAM. So the first point we have is the living fossil. So whenever you are studying paleontology and you are studying any particular phylum or class, then you should keep an eye on whether there is any species that belongs to the living fossil from this group because you get direct questions from this part. Okay. The next part is species living or extinct. So sometimes you need to differentiate between the species which are living and the species which are extinct. So whenever you are studying about each species of that class or phylum, then keep an eye on the range of time period through which it has been existed. Okay. Next point is the mass extinction events. So we have five major mass extinction events that have recorded in the earth history. So you need to mark the time period of the mass extinction, the cause of the mass extinction and the species which has become extinct by this mass extinction. You have to remember all these points. Okay, next is the characteristics feature of different fossil types. Let me show you some examples. In this figure, you can see that it is a match the column question where the characteristics feature of groups are marked in group 1 and the corresponding fossil types are marked in group 2. So this is an example of the characteristics feature of a particular fossil. Let me show you another example. Here we have a match the column question again and this time it is match the morphological features or life process in group 1 with the corresponding organisms in group 2. So whenever you are reading any particular phylum or class, then make sure to mark the unique feature of that particular phylum. Because questions are already asked from this part in previous years and you may still get questions from this in the coming years of JAM as well. Next we have the dentition of Lamellibranchia. Now you might have seen questions from this in the JAM previous year papers as well. So the dentition of Lamellibranchia is very important for JAM. And likewise, the facial suture of trilobites, the coiling in gastropods, these are the important characteristics of that particular phylum. Next, we have the mode of preservation of fossil. 
Although questions are not generally asked from this section, but still you may expect a question from this part this year. Next we have ambulacral and interambulacral plate in echinoderms. And whenever you are studying this lamellibranchia, trilobita, gastropoda or echinodermata etc. Then you might see that there is a basic body plan of these organisms. So you should try to remember that particular diagram of particular organism. Next we have the evolution of horse. Now this is a part of vertebrate paleontology which includes the evolution of man, horse and elephants but among them the evolution of horse is most important. Next we have the example of different class of invertebrates. So whenever you are studying any phylum or class then try to remember the examples of that phylum because from that you may get the match the column questions or find the odd on odd questions like that. Next we have the evolution of visual system in different mollusca. So in previous years it has already been asked that among all the mollusks which one have the best visual system and which one have the, the primitive type of visual system among them. Although the questions are not going to repeat but basing on this concept you may get some questions. So while reading the mollusca part try to keep an eye on that. Next we have the trilobites eyes. So in many exams it has already been asked that among the four trilobites here which one have eye or which one doesn't have eye. So while studying trilobites particularly for each species you should remember that which species have eyes and which species does not have eyes. And next part is the corals. So from corals you should remember its basic body plan, the chemical nature of the test, mode of life and these type of basic concepts. And also you might get questions from the coral leaf formed by the corals in the geomorphology part. And while reading gastropoda you should remember that which species has siphonal canal and which has not. And next we have to differentiate between vertebrate and invertebrate with examples and we should differentiate ammonite and gastropods. These are two important parts but if possible you should try to distinguish between all the phylum of invertebrate fossils. And with that we have covered almost every strategy that we need to follow to get good marks from paleontology part in JAM. Now let's discuss the stratigraphy part and what are the important points that you must cover for stratigraphy in order to get good marks in JAM. And our first point is the succession. Succession is the most important part of stratigraphy. So whenever you are studying stratigraphy of any particular group or supergroup, then the first thing that you should remember is the succession of that group. And the next point is the time of deposition of different beds. Now whenever you are reading the succession of any particular group, then you should try to remember the time of deposition of different beds. Because you might have to arrange them on the basis of their age. And also you might get questions like which formation is equivalent to this particular formation. And in order to answer these questions you should remember the time of deposition of different beds. Next we have the important ore bodies or important ore deposits. And next we should remember the characteristics fossils contain if any. So if the group contains any particular characteristics fossil then we should remember them. And we generally see fossils in the rocks of Sivalik and in the rocks of Kuch area. And we get some important plant fossils from the Gondwana supergroup. The next point is the age of different granite bodies and their corresponding group or supergroup. So while you are studying any particular group or supergroup, you should know that if there is any particular granite body associated with that particular group. Next we have the formation age and their location. For suppose we get Dharwar supergroup of Archean age and it is found in Karnataka area. The Singhbhum Kraton is found in the eastern part in the Bihar Odisha region and like this you should have a broad idea about which group is present in which particular area and what is its age, right? So whenever you study stratigraphy, just don't try to remember it but try to study it with maps. If you are reading any particular group or supergroup, then try to find out its location in India map and other groups and supergroups that are deposited in approximately same time all over India. So in that way you have a very deep understanding of the stratigraphy and it is no more a boring subject that you just mock up. Okay. Next point is the Gondwana succession. 
सो ऑल द सक्सेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट ग्रुप्स एंड सब ग्रुप्स आर इम्पोर्टेंट बट इन वेरियस एग्जामिनेशन द क्वेश्चन आर डायरेक्टली आस्ड फ्रॉम द गोंडवाना सुपर ग्रुप सो इट इज बेस्ट एडवाइज दैट यू शुड रीड ईज एंड एवरीथिंग अबाउट गोंडवाना सुपर ग्रुप वेरी थरोली लाइक इन हुई फॉर्मेशन यू गेट कोल एंड इन हुई फॉर्मेशन यू डोंट गेट कोल एंड इफ यू डोंट गेट कोल देयर देन फॉर डू यू गेट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर फॉर्मेशन एंड आफ्टर दैट यू शुड रिमेम्बर the time and the environment of deposition of different formation of gondwana supergroup next point is the chrono litho and biostratigraphic correlation so we have different chronostratigraphic lithostratigraphic and biostratigraphic units and questions are very often asked from the correlation of these particular units next we have the time scale so in the time scale you should remember different eons and eras and its extent like from how many million years to how many million years does that particular era or period existed and what are the important events that have occurred in that particular eon or era next we have the major mass extinction this part we have already discussed in paleontology that we should remember the time of all the five major mass extinction and the species that have been badly affected by the mass extinctions Next we have major glaciations so you should remember the major glaciation events and the time period when it had occurred and the last part is the important events related to evolution like when did the first flowering plant appeared on earth what is the age of birds or mammals etc so you need to go through all these type of questions because sometimes these questions are also asked directly in jam so that's basically all the points that are very much important from jam perspective now let's look at what are the books that we should read for stratigraphy and paleontology for stratigraphy we should follow the textbook of engineering geology by k m banger and the stratigraphy of india by dr ravindra kumar those are two standard books for bsc level and next the books for paleontology is Amol Das Gupta and P C Jain Anand Ramon. You read P C Jain for a basic understanding of the whole concept. And if you want the example of different features like the coiling in gastropoda, the dentition of lamellibranchia, etc., then you should follow the examples of Amol Das Gupta book. That's it for today. And if you have any video suggestions, then please mention that in the comment section. Thank you.